More polling indicates that Joe Biden is in fact in hot water if he plans on seeking reelection in 2024. Now, of course, the normal caveats, uh, we're still years away from the election, a lot could change. But based on this administration, uh, basically looking more and more like a shink, sinking ship, and the fact that the Biden administration doesn't really want to recalibrate, again, things are not looking good for him. So one poll by CNN, for instance, indicates the majority of Democratic voters do not want Biden to be the Democratic contender in 2024. In fact, 51% of Democratic and Democratic leaning voters say they want someone else to be the party's presidential nominee in the next election, compared to 45% who say they would like Biden to run as an incumbent. Now, this is definitely unique. It's different from what we experienced from the past two presidents. For instance, former President Barack Obama had the backing of 79% of Democrats to run for reelection in March of 2010, while Trump had the support of 77% of Republicans in March of 2018. None of this is really that surprising to me, Jenk, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, so 45% is a disastrous number. Remember, Biden was part of the Obama administration where they were sitting on 79%. So does age have something to do with this? Sure, everybody thought Obama was gonna run again because he was a young president. Biden, on the other hand, is approximately 200 years old. And when, by the way, when we pointed that out in the primary, the media as well as Democratic hacks all yelled at us and said, no, he's a spring chicken. And by the way, all of our previous attacks about how old Bernie Sanders was, ignore that. You're not allowed to talk about Biden's age. But we said, look, the voters are gonna think about it whether we are allowed to talk about it or not. And guess what, they're thinking about it. And they're saying, look, congrats, you got Trump off of our back. That's the main reason we voted for you. You've been weak, ineffectual, and largely napping. And now a lot of us, a majority of us, say it shouldn't be you. Unfortunately, Kamala Harris's numbers are not much better. No. Nope. Uh, and so, have establishment Democrats gotten the message in D.C.? <laughs> of course not. Uh, Biden is going around saying, "We promise we won't be more progressive." <laughs> but brother, that's not a poll of Republicans or independents. That's a poll of Democratic voters. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, just like this unwillingness to really reevaluate what this administration is up to. Um, This is a little bit of a tangent, but it goes along with what you're saying in regard to Biden's age. Remember, Biden's the one who nominates people, appoints people into his cabinet, right? Javier Becerra, uh, his name is pronounced Javier Becerra. He recently called him Javier uh, Bacaria. Jesus Christ, okay. It's just- But it goes on and on. Look, everybody knows it before we were the bad guys for pointing out the obvious. Now everybody says, "Oh well, that's so obvious that they, you know it's not worth mentioning." No, it's worth mentioning anyway. But guys, don't get distracted though by the age. Age is clearly an issue here for the Democratic voters. But if that was all, uh, the numbers wouldn't be like this at all, right? We've had plenty of older presidents that were incredibly popular, like FDR. FDR died on the job; he was that old, right? And and he is he didn't have any problem with his popularity. So uh, the other half of it is that Biden didn't do anything. And they think uh, it's just a marketing issue. If we just yell at people enough that uh, we did something when we didn't, uh, we'll trick people. And to be fair to them, that is how it's worked for the last 40 years. And they had uh, mainstream media as their complicit ally who told everybody, "Oh my God, Oh, when Obama passed the Stock Act, that totally stops insider trading in Congress. It's historic reform, and we were here saying, no, it's not. That doesn't even have any enforcement provisions. And lo and behold, all these years later, it turns out there's no enforcement provisions, and they've never enforced it on anyone. It wasn't historic reform, it was window dressing. But window dressing isn't working anymore. And so mainstream media is not the only game in town. So people are getting the word that you guys did nothing, and it's, Glaringly obvious when you don't do the bare minimum, like fifteen dollar minimum wage, and pretend that you never promised it, and and of course voting rights. I mean that was humiliating. Super humiliating, absolutely. No, I mean it's so you say that the Biden administration did nothing, and. 
play I'll play devil's advocate and then um, squash uh, the devil's advocate because it's a garbage argument. No, 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 you don't get it. Uh, they passed uh, a COVID stimulus in the beginning of the administration. Honestly, so did uh, the Trump administration. Biden's was a little better, it included one year of that child tax credit. So I wanna be fair and mention that. However, the one thing that they plan on campaigning on is the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which look, infrastructure projects take a long time to carry out. So people are not going to experience how that bill is benefiting their lives until years from now, let's be clear. Um, it is a corporate handout bill, we've talked about that a billion times. But more importantly, something that Biden's ignoring, something that the rest of the country is ignoring. Right now, major corporations like Facebook and Microsoft had to put their um, headquarters construction on hold because guess what? Concrete workers in Seattle have been striking for months, for months. So major construction projects around the country are being delayed as a result of that. No, you know, no attention paid to that. You know, Biden, it's all lip service whenever it's politically convenient for him. But if they're planning, if Democrats are planning on just leaning into uh, the bipartisan infrastructure bill to win re-election, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, look, um, I never, I have to confess that I never thought that progressives had a chance in 2024. Uh, in a Democratic primary uh, after Bernie Sanders lost in 20. Why? Uh, we didn't have a giant star like Bernie teed up to go in 24. Uh, and the press would just eviscerate any progressive that came out against a Democratic incumbent president. The, the press would say it's out of bounds, they're radical, they're the worst, they're trying to ruin the Democratic Party. The press are the thugs of corporate Democrats, okay? Uh, they, that, they're their enforcers. Uh, and so with not enough name recognition and the whole weight of the press against you, I thought it was near impossible uh, to get uh, a candidate by 2024. Uh, I am now amending that uh, because Democratic voters all across the country are saying, no, this is stupid. This is definitely not enough. And so if you're gonna pretend this is enough and you're gonna lie to me, no, I want someone else. And so if they're looking for someone else and that someone else ain't Kamala Harris, well, now progressives are back in the ball game. So there's your silver lining for Biden's incompetence. Well, let me give you some other findings. So we talked about the CNN poll. There was one other poll done by Redfield and Wilton Strategies. And what they found was that Trump has more than doubled Biden in one subgroup. People who didn't vote in 2020. Among that group, 34% said that they would vote for Trump in 2024 if he's the candidate, while only 14% of people who didn't vote in 2020 said the same about Biden. And only 19% said it about Kamala Harris, so she doesn't do much better. So now, why the giant difference? Well, first of all, you shouldn't be overly concerned because that was the highest turnout we've ever had in a presidential election by a lot. And those folks still didn't vote. So they're not likely to be voters next time around. But what that does show you is Republicans have become more populist because the disaffected are the ones that don't vote. They're not the elites, the, almost all the elites vote, right? And so the Democrats have become the party of elites. That is a nightmare because there's a lot more non elites than there are elites. And so that's the sand trap that we find ourselves in, but the establishment doesn't even realize it's a sand trap. They think, oh, everyone I know that went to Yale and Harvard is voting for us. And so I guess we're about to get 99% of the electorate. Right. No, 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 people that are not in your circles now think the Democrats stand for the rich and the powerful. And in a lot of ways they do, but they the do. Republican Party is even worse. <laughs> the Republican Party is built for the rich and powerful. Yet the Democrats, again, in their infinite incompetence, are letting the Republicans grab the populist mantle at a time when populism is taking off like a rocket. This spells doom for the country. But you can't get a single Democrat in Washington to realize that because they're in their own bubble where they think, we nailed this thing. Well, you didn't, and you're about to get slaughtered, and you're endangering the republic with your incompetence. Pass something. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that 
All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.